this is one of the nice things about talking about UFOs is it expands the Overton window. It expands our understanding of what possibly could be life. Mm -hmm. It gets us to think. It gets the scientific community to think. When we go to Mars, when we go to these different moons that possibly have life, you know, we're not looking at uh, legged organisms. We're looking at some kind of complexity mm -hmm. that uh, arises in resistance to the natural world. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of interesting- I like that, resistance to the natural world, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so s somehow there's a rebellious process, complex system going on here. And I don't know, you know, the, the many ways it could take form. And there, there's a sense, you know, for aliens that as the technology develops, they take form more and more in, in as information, mm -hmm. as something that can influence the space of of ideas, of the processing of data itself. So I just, uh, this idea of embodiment that we humans so admire, physically visible, perceivable embodiment may be a very uh, inefficient thing, right? right? <laughs> if you think just about, you know, your area, AI, you know, we're, we're trying to make smaller and smaller and smaller uh, circuitry that is uh, basically closer and closer to the physics of how the universe operates, right? Right down at the level of, I mean, quantum computers are basically right down about quantum information storage. So fast forward 10,000, 100,000 years, maybe somebody found a way to embody AI directly into the physics of the universe, right? And it doesn't require a physical manifestation. It just it just sits in space time. It's just a, a locally ordered space. We're just locally ordered space time, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You know, I mean, people, uh, but maybe they just, they found a way to embody it there. They probably have to get really good at not, you know, trampling on the ants. Mm -hmm. the, the better your technology gets, the easier it is to accidentally like, oops. Right. <laughs> just well, destroy these simpleton biological systems. We constantly think about whatever these things might be. We think that they are some sort of a unified force. Well, maybe they're not unified. Maybe they are as disparate as you and I are. And maybe what keeps them from stomping all over the ants is each other, right? That they are in a self-tension to prevent one or more of them from running amok. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the anarchy of nations that we have on Earth. Yeah. So there's there's always, <laughs> we're, there's always going to be this- um, There's a hierarchy. This hierarchy that's formed of greater and greater intelligences. Right. right. And they're all probably also wondering, wait, what's bigger than me? Exactly, that's what I always wonder, is that maybe that they're, what keeps them in line is something that is beyond them. Like what created the universe? I mean, that, you know, th that's probably a question that bothers them too. Mm -hmm. <laughs>